In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to welcome you today to this celebration of Eucharist. In a special way, we welcome all of you who are gathered here with us, most especially those from the Cathedral Parish and those who are part of the diocese and staff. I look forward to, to meeting all of you and working with you. We also want to acknowledge in a particular way those who are joining us through the live stream. We can't see them, but they can see us. And we certainly welcome them and look forward to meeting them as well. I am Bishop-elect David Bonner, and I am your next bishop. And I am so excited to be here with you and for you. Earlier this morning, I celebrated Mass in my parish, and I can't tell you the comfort and the strength and the peace that that brought to my heart. And I feel just the same right now, being with all of you and being with my brothers in the clergy and being around this altar. It is such a source of comfort, strength, and peace. Today, we celebrate the feast of Saint Elizabeth of Hungary, a woman who is synonymous with charity. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, we have been healed and tried apart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whose gift St. Elizabeth of Hungary recognized and revered Christ in the poor, grant through her intercession that we may serve with unfailing charity the needy and those afflicted. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Whoever does not love remains in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that anyone who is a murderer does not have eternal life remaining in him. The way we come to know love was that we, that he laid down his life for us. So we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If someone who has worldly means sees a brother in need and refuses him compassion, how can the love of God remain in him? Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, To you who hear, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather, love your enemies and do good to them and lend, expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great and you will be called children of the Most High. For he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as also your Father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down, and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Thirty-six years ago, I boarded a jumbo jet in New York City and headed to the eternal city of Rome with my classmates, who all of whom were about to begin our journey to the priesthood at the North American College. And you know, when you travel to Europe, there's a time change. You leave in the evening, and then you arrive and it's already morning. But by the time you arrive, uh, you're usually exhausted because you're supposed to be sleeping. But you arrive to a morning that has already begun and the worst thing you can do is go to sleep. So I remember when we arrived, we were greeted by the staff of the college and some of the upperclassmen and we were put on a bus and we were ushered into St. Peter's Square where um, the bus stopped and we all got to gaze for just a moment at the Vatican. And even though our eyes were bleary, I think we all were just overcome with awe at what we saw. And then we took the brief trip to the North American College up the Janiculum Hill where the bus stopped and we proceeded to enter the chapel. The bells were ringing, and as we walked into the chapel, we all found a place in a pew, and we prayed. And I spent four years at the North American College, but that moment I learned probably the most powerful lesson I could ever learn, and it came from the rector, who addressed all of us tired new men and he said something that I will never ever forget he said gentlemen the needs of the church are always greater than our own the needs of the church are always greater than our own I have gone back to that wise statement every time I have been transferred to remind myself 
that it's not about me, but it's about others, especially those in most need. I was just transferred back in July. I went through the whole rigmarole of, of moving and changing my address and doing all those things that are part of moving. And after that, I sighed and I thought, boy, I hope I don't have to do this again for a long time. But you know, God has a sense of humor. If you want to make him laugh, just tell him your plans. And by God's design, the needs of the church in Youngstown are greater than the needs at St. Aidan Parish. And I'm humbled that the Holy Father has chosen me to be your bishop and to serve those needs with my brother clergy and our staff. That's why the church exists, to proclaim the good news, but also to serve others as Jesus came and served. Today, the church celebrates someone whose life is synonymous with service. We can be even more specific with charity in St. Elizabeth of Hungary. Her story is a unique one. She died before she was 24. Here we are celebrating her as a saint. But she was part of an arranged marriage that was arranged when she was very, very young the age of 14, she was married, and she and her husband, who she deeply loved, produced three children, and lo and behold, he was killed by the plague, and it broke her heart. But it didn't break her heart to the point that she couldn't still love and serve. And so she worked with the poor, she served the sick much to the disdain of the family that was left behind. In fact, they evicted her from the house. But she was a woman of charity who saw that the needs of others are greater than her own. As a priest, I love to pray Eucharistic prayer too. I know that that's not always going to be possible now as a bishop. But I like that prayer not because of its brevity, it is the shortest of all of them, but there's a line in there that speaks about how we as a church are to grow in the fullness of charity. We are to be people of love. We are to bring to life the words that we heard today in the first reading, how we are to love not in word or speech, but in deed and in truth. And that love is to extend even to our enemies, as Jesus reminds us in the gospel today. So as we gather to begin this new time together, I think God is letting us know that it's not about me. It's not about you individually per se. It's about us. It's about the needs of the church. And I can't wait to work with all of you to meet those needs and to serve the faithful of the six counties of Youngstown. St. Elizabeth of Hungary, pray for us. Trusting in God, let us now lift up our hearts and offer these prayers. For the church, may God continue to bless and purify her in her work of proclaiming the good news. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For public officials and leaders of nations, may God grant them fortitude in their work of eradicating racism in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live with chronic illness, may God's infinite love strengthen them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, may God's grace at work in our lives bear good fruit for the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died today, may God's merciful embrace welcome them home. 
Today, we remember in a special way the deceased members of the Reyes family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Good and loving God, grant us the serenity to accept the things in life we cannot change. Give us the courage to change the things we can and bless us with the wisdom to know the difference. And hear and answer all of our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give to those who make sacrificial offerings at your altar, O Lord, that spirit of devotion which you instilled in your saints so that we may approach these sacred rites with a pure mind and a fervent heart and celebrate a sacrifice that is pleasing to you and ensures your favor to us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage, their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. story of As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you through the ages, we merit to be coherent to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. On you stay. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. By the power of this sacrament, Lord, we pray, lead us always in your love through the example of blessed Saint Elizabeth of Hungary and bring to fulfillment the good work you have begun in us until the day of Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. To the members of the media and to our viewers, we welcome you and we thank you as together we welcome the sixth bishop of the Diocese of Youngstown. The past few days have been given to us hope. The Browns won, the Steelers continue to win, and Pope Francis named a bishop for the Diocese of Youngstown. This morning, Bishop-elect, I only thought, thank God you were named to Youngstown and not to Cincinnati <laughs> after that outstanding win this past Sunday. It's my honor now to welcome to the podium Monsignor Robert Sifrin, our diocesan administrator. Over the last five months, he has been our guiding force. Monsignor Sifrin, thank you. But your job is still not yet done. You have 55 more days and 15 hours left. In a spirit of gratitude, I welcome Monsignor Sifrin. Thank you, Monsignor Zura, and thank all of you for joining us this morning in St. Columba Hall. There's a refrain from the Psalms that I think is so appropriate today. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is with great joy that I share with you the news that the Holy Father, Pope Francis, has appointed Father David Bonner as the sixth bishop of the Diocese of Youngstown. Until now, Bishop-elect Bonner was a priest of the Diocese of Pittsburgh and pastor of St. Aidan Parish in Wexford. He brings with him a wealth of experience in ministry, a deep love of Christ and his church. He has served in many assignments, including rector of the seminary, vicar for clergy, director of vocations, director of the permanent diaconate. But he began his priestly ministry at St. Vitus Parish, just across the border in Newcastle. Currently, he's serving as the editor of the Priest Magazine. And for all of you Steeler fans, he was a chaplain of the Steelers for 12 years. We again owe a debt of gratitude to the Diocese of Pittsburgh. We offer our prayers to Bishop Zubik, the Diocese of Pittsburgh, Father Bonner's family and friends as they share him with us. Thank you. I ask all the Catholics of the diocese to join me in a profound spirit of prayer as we prepare for Bishop-elect Bonner's ordination and installation on January the 12th, 2021. This is a grace-filled time for the diocesan church. I also ask for the prayers and support of our ecumenical friends and our neighbors as we begin a new chapter in the ministry of the gospel in the Diocese of Youngstown. Please join me in welcoming Bishop-elect David Bonner.
Good morning. Good morning, Youngstown. Thank you, Monsignor Sifrin, Father Zora, but thank you, Monsignor Sifrin, for the kind introduction and for your prayers and support over this last week. In the short time that I've known you, you've already become not only a trusted confidant, but also a true brother. Thank you so much for your dedicated service to this diocese and for your leadership to me in this time of transition. I look forward to working with you. On Monday, November 9th, I received a phone call from Washington, D.C. When I said hello, the gentleman identified himself as Archbishop Christophe Pierre, the Apostolic Nuncio. He asked me if I was alone, which I was, and then he suggested that I might want to sit down. As I went to sit down, the Archbishop said, the Holy Father has appointed you the Bishop of Youngstown. For a moment, I was utterly speechless. There was a deafening silence. And then the Archbishop kept saying, hello, hello. I responded, hello, and then I said, wow. And there were more wows. And then the Archbishop said, well, do you, you do accept, don't you? And I paused, and with tears in my eyes and joy in my heart, I said, by the grace of God and with total humility, I accept this appointment. And then the good archbishop said, have you been to Youngstown? I told him that my first priestly assignment was at St. Vitus in Newcastle, right over the border. It was not uncommon at that time to cross the border to golf, shop, or dine out with friends. But that is not my only association with Northeastern Ohio. My dad's sister, Marjorie Burford, and her husband and family lived for many years at Lake Milton. There used to be, some of you might recall this, an amusement park, and my uncle was the mayor of the town. Their su surviving daughter, Debbie Pence, still resides in the area. I also have done many private and annual retreats at the Villa Maria Retreat and Conference Center in Villa Maria, PA, just at the edge of the Pennsylvania-Ohio border, a stone's throw from the Diocese of Youngstown. I want to convey with all my heart my sincere and humble gratitude to His Holiness, Pope Francis, for his trust and confidence in me. I pledge to him that I will work hard every day to know, love, and serve the flock entrusted to me. To Archbishop Christophe Pierre, thank you for your patience and your humor. You told me that we need happy bishops. I promise you that I will strive every day to preach the joy of the gospel and wear that joy in my heart. To my current ordinary, Bishop David Zubik, there are no words that can adequately describe my sincere admiration and respect for you. I have had the distinct privilege of working both with you and for you. You were the first person I could speak to after hearing this stunning news. Since that moment and following all of our subsequent conversations during this past week, along with your personal visit to my parish to pray with me on Sunday, you have been supportive beyond words, especially during a time when I have found it so hard to speak. You are a true brother and friend. To His Eminence, Donald Cardinal Whirl, who ordained me on July 23rd, 1988, in my home parish church of St. Gabriel of the Sorrowful Virgin, and gave me the first of my many assignments, I thank you for calling me to orders and believing in me. I also want to thank the Auxiliary Bishops of Pittsburgh, Bishop William Winter and Bishop William Walterscheid, for your compelling witness as successors to the Apostles. And to my fellow Pittsburgh brothers, His Eminence Cardinal Adam Maida, His Eminence Cardinal Daniel DiNardo, Archbishop Bernie Hebda, Bishop Thomas Tobin, Bishop Paul Bradley, and Bishop Ed Burns, thank you for your example. I am honored to follow in your footsteps and become one of many Pittsburgh priests called to serve beyond Pittsburgh. I'm also grateful to Bishop Kevin Rhodes, 
Bishop of Fort Wayne, South Bend, and Chairman of the Board for Our Sunday Visitor for his support in my role as editor of the Priest Magazine during the past years. I would be remiss if I did not pause to acknowledge my immediate predecessor, the late Bishop George Murray, who displayed time and time again a true pastor's heart. I hope to emulate his example. He was a true gift to the church who left us too soon. I promise to build on his foundation. The only request I made for this day to Monsignor Ciprian was that we visit Bishop Murray's grave, which we will do later this afternoon. To Archbishop Dennis Schnur, the Metropolitan, and to my soon-to-be brother bishops of Ohio, thank you for your support. I look forward to collaborating with you for the good of the church in Ohio. And to my brother priests and deacons in Pittsburgh, I will always be proud to have been one of you and ever grateful for your imprint on my heart. Thank you. Thank you for your fraternal and prayerful support. Please pray for me and know that I will always pray for you. To the priests, deacons, and religious of this diocese and all the men and women vowed to consecrated life, I'm thrilled to join you in serving this local church. Please know that you have my trust and respect. I cannot wait to meet you. I know that as a bishop, I will be asked to be a teacher. But as I mentioned to Monsignor Sifrin days ago, the best teacher must always aspire to be a learned student. I desire to learn from you the faith, traditions, needs, strengths, and challenges of this local church. To the diocesan staff, some of whom I've just met, and all those who work for the Church of Youngstown in any way, be it in the Chancery Office, in any of our parishes or Catholic schools, Catholic college or campus ministry programs, Catholic cemeteries or Catholic foundations, I am honored and humbled to be a collaborator with you in bringing the life of Jesus Christ to this corner of the world. We are all in this together. To the seminarians and all those discerning a religious vocation, you have my prayers and support. Given the clamorous noise of the world, I know it is hard at times to effectively discern and hear the voice of God. As a former vocation director and rector, I will do my best to ensure a healthy environment for discernment and to support you in accord with God's will. True peace comes from knowing God's will. To the faithful of this great diocese of Youngstown, I promise with all my heart to give you a shepherd's care. While it is important that the sheep know the voice of the shepherd, the shepherd must always, as our Holy Father has noted, to be in tune with the smell and needs of the sheep. With God's help, I will seek to always be there with you and for you, always in the name of Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. And to any sheep who are hurting or feeling lost in any way, I will be there for you. Above all, to any of our brothers and sisters who have been abused or hurt by the actions of any minister of the church, especially a clergy member, I ask your forgiveness and I pray for your healing. To the religious leaders of all faiths and denominations, as well as to all the leaders of the civic community, I am eager to collaborate with you for the good of our Northeastern Ohio community. Together, we can make a difference. To all the people who live in the six counties of this diocese, Ashtabula, Columbiana, Mahoning, Portage, Stark, and Trumbull, whether you are Catholic or non-Catholic, believer or non-believer, whatever your ethnic origin or race, whether you are employed, unemployed, or underemployed, a Browns fan, a Bengals fan, a Steelers fan, or no fan, I am here to be of service to you. You will always be in my prayers. I want nothing but the best for you and our community as a whole. In 32 years as a priest, 25 spent in parish ministry, nearly 17 as a pastor, 
I have always worked hard to effect unity among God's people. The work of forging this unity is all the more challenging today, given the world in which we live, which on many levels is fractured, splintered, and divided. We need unity in our families, parishes, neighborhoods, and communities. One by one, we can bring people together. I feel so passionate about this endeavor that I have chosen as my Episcopal motto from John 17, 21, the great priestly prayer of Jesus, his petition that all may be one. That is my prayer and my pledge as your next bishop, to do all in my power to bring about unity and oneness, even in the face of differences and diversity. I was so blessed to do this work as a parish priest. In fact, that's all I ever wanted to be was a parish priest. Now it is my honor to lead this effort in our six counties as your next bishop. I ask for your prayers, but I also ask for you to be partners with me. We are all in this together. This oneness is something that we all learn in the first classroom, the home. It is what it means to be a family. Our families are our first churches. My dear parents, George and Mary Bernadette Bonner, God rest their souls, drilled this oneness into us children from day one. This oneness was always centered in Jesus with family meals preceded by grace, Sunday mass, Catholic education, and love of neighbor. I thank God for both of them. Although they were never able to go to college, they were the first teachers and the best teachers I ever had. One of the best moments I ever shared with them came following my ordination to the diaconate in Rome when our diaconal class had a private audience with the Holy Father. What a joy to see the look on their faces when dad, a convert to the faith, and mom got to meet the Holy Father. Thanks, mom and dad. When I was ordained a priest, I remember being told that no one comes to the altar alone. There is a long line of people, fingerprints, if you will, that touch our lives as instruments of God's grace. Well, although I made the 52-mile, 56-minute drive this morning to my new home alone, I stand here today with the realization that there are so many people who are part of me, for they have played an integral part in my story and will forever be emblazoned on my heart. It is not just my parents, but my siblings, Mary Lynn, George, Kathy, and Harry, and their spouses, Brian, Michelle, Kenny, and Jean, my nieces and nephews, grandparents, aunts and uncles, cousins and friends, neighbors, classmates, co-workers and parishioners, and yes, even strangers. I am so appreciative of my home parish family of St. Gabriel of the Sorrowful Virgin in Whitehall and the elementary school in which I was formed in the faith. I want to thank the teachers that I had at South Hills Catholic High School, which became Seton LaSalle High School, as well as those who educated me at Duquesne University, St. Paul Seminary, the North American College, and the Pontifical Gregorian University. To the Sisters of St. Francis of the Providence of God, the Sisters of Charity, the Christian Brothers, the Spiritan Community, and the many lay men and women who served as my teachers, thank you for forming me. I also want to acknowledge the religious communities who have been collaborators in my ministry during these 32 years, namely the Apostles of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the Divine Providence Sisters, the Sisters of St. Francis of the Newman Community, the Sisters of Mercy, the Sisters of the Divine Redeemer, and the Holy Family Sisters of Nazareth. I also want to thank the passionist community of priests and brothers in Pittsburgh whose doors have always been open to me for spiritual direction and confession. In a particular way, I want to thank my brother priests, deacons, and lay ministers and staff with whom I have served with over the years in Pittsburgh. I want to thank the faithful of the following parishes and diocesan ministries, St. Vitus, Newcastle, St. Rosalia, Greenfield, St. Thomas More, Bethel Park, St. Paul Seminary, Westwood, 
St. Bartholomew, Penn Hills, the Diocese of Pittsburgh Clergy Office, St. Pius and Our Lady of Loretta Brookline, St. Bernard, Mount Lebanon, and Our Lady of Grace, Scott Township. I also want to express my gratitude to what I have often referred to as my first pastorate, the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> what a joy it was serving as your chaplain for 12 years. I hope you Browns and Bengals fans will not hold that against me. Most especially, I want to acknowledge the faithful of the new parish of St. Aidan in Wexford, in which since July of this year, I have been so blessed to be your pastor and part of this exciting adventure of becoming a new parish. We were just getting started. I have really fallen in love with you. I will miss you and the Wexford area. But you know what they say, if you want to make God laugh, Tell them your plans. I never thought I would be leaving you so soon. I want to thank the staff at our Sunday Visitor, most notably my co-workers at the Priest Magazine. I've enjoyed every minute working with you to realize our mission to serve the church, most especially the priests of our country and beyond. Finally, and most importantly, I want to thank Almighty God for calling me to the priesthood. Many years ago, when I was a young priest, a vocation director, thanks to the bequest of a Pittsburgh priest, I produced a TV commercial for priesthood that ran during the NFL football games, the title of which was, A Priest, An Ordinary Man Called to Do Extraordinary Work. I truly am an ordinary man, human and prone to weakness. I come from very humble beginnings. Nevertheless, by God's design, I am now called to do his extraordinary work here in these six counties as the sixth bishop of Youngstown. I cannot wait to roll up my sleeves, get my lunch bucket, and go to work. I am humbled and excited to become an Ohioan, one of you, with you, and for you. Please be assured of my prayers for you daily. I hope that you will do the same for me. Together, let us pray that every day, that all may be one.